For the last few months, I have been getting a seemingly endless amount of requests on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube comments from people wanting me to talk about Onision. And I have not because I was out of town, I was on tour, I was extremely busy, and didn't feel like I wanted to make yet another video about Onision. Internet drama, for the most part, feels useless and tiring and in my experience, it does take a toll on me mentally, and that's just not a road that I wanted to go down. But this isn't just internet drama, like I said. This is very serious stuff. I, I spent the better part of the last few days looking into what's been going on and what I have missed while I was gone, and it's it's worse than I could have ever imagined. In previous videos with Onision, I thought I was dealing with somebody who lacked empathy, somebody who was very self-centered, who would do whatever it took to benefit himself, regardless of who he might hurt in the process. I thought I was dealing with a pretty shitty human, and in that I was right, but I didn't realize how predatory he has been for the last many years. If you're curious about the specifics of the predatory actions he's been taking, I'm gonna leave links to YouTube videos in the description that I think you should check out. These will be far more comprehensive than what I tell you in this video. I'm going to make this short, simple, to the point, and give my personal perspective on all of this as someone who does know Onision personally. And by know him personally, I mean that I have worked with him, he flew me out to his house, we've collaborated, we've made YouTube videos together, we have had countless negative interactions, some of which I will talk about in this video. Uh, but as I said, if you want to know the details of what he's done, uh, the videos linked below are videos from, first of all, Blair White. She interviewed one of his victims. Mr. Repsion, he made a very long video detailing what Onision has been doing throughout all of his past relationships, and it gets nasty. And also Repzilla, who made a really important video bringing attention to Onision's spouse, who is certainly not innocent in all of this either. Watching all of these videos made me feel extremely sad. I felt disgusted with myself that I have ever put such a vile human on my channel, that I have ever in any way promoted somebody. I, I feel dirty for ever condoning anything in the way of association, and I, I want to right now make it very clear if it's not already abundantly clear that I, I want nothing more than for him to have to in some way pay for what he's done. I know right now that he is trying to copyright strike everybody who makes videos about him, which is why I will not be using any of his clips in this video so he doesn't have the opportunity to do so, but he is putting copyright claims on people's videos that are within their rights. It's all fair use, but he is abusing the YouTube system to take down these videos and threaten people into silence so that he can hide the shitty things that he's doing to underage girls. I think it's important to make YouTube videos like this. I think it's important that everyone is speaking out because bringing awareness can and does help a lot of people, but I think the bread and butter of everything is actually doing something that can take action, and if YouTube can do something because obviously he's abusing their system, that would be great. Try to report this in some way. I don't know how else to do it other than law enforcement. A lot of these things that he's doing, he he's is clearly a predator, but he's towing the line of what is legal and what is not. So it may be difficult to actually press charges, but my thoughts on it are if he has towed the line this carefully for this long, there's got to be somewhere that he messed up. Somebody somewhere knows something that can legally hold him accountable, and that's what I think the focus needs to be. He has a repeated pattern of going after underage girls. One of his relationships, actually no, two of his past relationships, landed him in a situation where he had to look up the state laws of where the girl lived so that he could know whether or not it was legal for him to have sex with them. I mean, this is how young of a girl he goes after, and this is a repeated pattern. The most recent case of this was a girl named Sarah, who they legally got guardianship of because she was going through some troubles at home. She moved in with them when she was 16. They had her lie about the fact that there was no hugging, there was no cuddling, which there is video evidence of. And then as soon as she turned 18, as soon as she turned 18, Greg had sex with her and then kicked her out of his house. There are texts of him bragging about taking her virginity. They even had her sign this bogus NDA to try to keep her quiet. Like, the very sketchy things. He didn't want to take her 
with him to hang out with other YouTube friends because he was afraid that it might make them start asking questions, which of course it would. I feel so terribly, I feel sick thinking about what these girls must have gone through. There's clearly a power dynamic. They started out as fans of him. They were probably excited whenever he started communicating with them. He's even had his spouse date women so that he could then benefit from that relationship. There is just no end to what he does. And while I, I do initially feel inclined to pity his spouse because what a nightmare it must be to be married to someone who is so toxic and manipulative, but then you have to take into consideration how much work was done independently of Onision to actually lure these young girls into a toxic situation. And you can't be innocent when you're doing stuff like that. I'm sure there was all kinds of manipulation and abuse directed at his spouse, but nothing makes something like that forgivable. Onision has several times made tweets and videos and comments on rape victims, saying that it's their fault if they get raped and don't immediately go to the police because then they themselves are enabling the predator and that makes them just as bad if not worse. Which is apparently something his spouse took to heart and he did not respond favorably to somebody he's married to. I can't imagine, I can't imagine what that would do to someone's mental state to constantly have to put up with that. I can't imagine. It must be torture. It must be hell. But nothing ever excuses going out of your way on your own to lure young women into a situation that you damn well know is dangerous. Repsion also said in his video that Onision never does anything out of the kindness of his heart for other people. Anytime you see some kind of heartfelt apology, which I myself have received many from him, anytime you see him say something kind about someone or defend someone or pretend to be some kind of knight in shining armor, it's all bullshit. It's all an act to gain something for himself. And I have examples. I could sit here all day and list things off, but I'm gonna try to stick to my own personal experiences with him because that I can definitely speak to. Personally, he has attacked me in, in many ways. He has shamed me for my body. He has made countless videos on my boobs, which is disturbing. He has said things like, I would never let someone I was with make the decisions that you have made with your body. It's all very controlling. The language that he uses towards women is very controlling, very manipulative. He will shame you into agreeing with him. He always claims that he's right. So yes, he's made several videos about my boobs, which is wildly inappropriate. He's made fun of me for my height, saying that it's gross how tall I am. He has made comments about my weight, saying it's disgusting that I am so thin. He's even made accusations against my family, saying that they don't love me. And then he threw himself like a, a damn celebratory party whenever he found out that I got cheated on because it was his opportunity opportunity not to empathize with somebody who was clearly hurting, but to say how virtuous he was and right. I truly feel that he has tried everything, everything that he could to break my confidence or self-worth. I remember whenever I was in Seattle collaborating with him, he, you know, opened up to me about some of his relationship struggles, which by the way included a heartbreaking story about how he just wishes the internet knew the whole thing with Shiloh whenever she was having seizures, that whole thing was scripted, that whole thing was fake, and he thought it was funny at first and it would get clicks and views and this is something that they worked on together, but now the internet's turned against him and he used this as a feel sorry for me pity party. And at the time, I believed it. I feel so stupid that I ever would have believed anything that this piece of shit had to say, but I did. And honestly, now looking back, I don't think that that was fake. But he opened up to me and a few others about this situation, which kind of led everybody else to start talking about their life and problems that they were having. And the things that I said definitely gave the impression that I struggled with confidence and self-worth, especially in the area of relationships because of how many times I had been hurt prior. And those things that I told him, I feel like did stick in his head and he decided to use over and over again to try to break me down online. He knew that that was my weak spot, that that was something that I was insecure about and just kept poking at it to hopefully, I, I don't know, what, what is the goal? It's hard for me to understand whatever is going on in someone's brain that seeks to hurt people. I just, I don't get it. I don't understand why. Like it, it doesn't make any sense to me, but regardless, Fast forward a few years and this was my breaking point. I, I foolishly decided to forgive him for some of the things that he had done to me. 
those are things that I can I can normally look past a little bit more gracefully whenever someone hurts me, which maybe isn't healthy, but I can. But when they hurt a friend of mine or somebody that I love or care about deeply, I can't, I can't deal. I'm not gonna go into detail here, but Greg had been harassing me and other YouTubers for quite some time to help a friend. Not a friend of his, a friend of ours. It was a very public internet situation. I'm, like I said, I don't wanna go into detail, but he had been on the internet constantly tweeting, making videos, harassing, saying you need to help your friend. He was harassing her. I actually debated him in one of the worst, I don't even think you can call it a debate, one of the worst conversations I've ever had in my life. And he agreed to back down if she just requested that he stop harassing her. She did. And did he back down? For a couple months. Then he was back at it, but this time it was different because what he was doing was directly getting in the way. I reached out pleading with him, if you could please stop tweeting, it's gonna get in the way of us actually being able to do something. I know that this is like something that he wanted, right? He had been fighting for for a long time, so any logical person who truly cared about the situation would have backed off and let us do whatever it was that we were trying to do to actually help. We were successful despite him, he didn't listen, he didn't cooperate, he continued doing what he did to get in the way, which, like I said, does not align with somebody who truly cares about the situation. We were able to pull it off, and <laughs> what does he do? He then makes fun of me in the form of skits, which is, that's, that's kind of what he does. He makes skits or parodies, making fun of people in situations whenever he has nothing else logical left to say. He just makes insulting skits and says, oh, well, it's comedy, it's okay, I can get away with it because it's funny, right? This had been something that he wanted to happen for a long time, and it finally did, and he wasn't happy about it. So what does that tell you? It tells you that he never really gave a shit at all to begin with. Not at all. There's no winning with him. There's no logic with him. There's no real concern from him and there never really has been for anything, for anyone. So yeah, Mr. Repsion was absolutely right whenever he pointed out that Greg never truly does anything for anyone else. He never truly says things that he means whenever he acts like he's concerned for other people because when it comes down to it, he won't do the right thing. He won't support the right thing. Almost everything he says is hypocritical to something he himself has said before. And it's pretty funny to me that he has railed on victims of abuse for so long saying, you need to come forward if you're abused. You need to say something. And if you don't, you're just as bad. Well, Onision, look at what's happening. All of these people, who you have victimized, all of these women that you have hurt are now coming forward and saying something. So aren't you happy about that? Or did all those statements not apply to you? Probably not. There's no way that a person this vile and this immoral hasn't at some point done something illegal that he can actually be prosecuted for. I highly encourage anybody who might know something or experienced something that falls into that category, I really, really hope that you say something or do something because this, this guy, Onision, will continue. He will not stop. He's established a very clear pattern of abuse. He will not stop. He will find another person. And the only way to actually put an end to this madness is to do something legal. Or at the very least, YouTube, do something about the abuse of the copyright system. You know, take down his channel. And I, I have never in my life wanted somebody's channel to be taken down. People have, have slandered me. People have, you know, made hate videos on me, made fun of me. People have said horrible things online. And I have never wanted a channel to be taken down. I've never wanted to silence somebody. But whenever a person like him uses their power online over girls, young girls, to manipulate them into sexual things whenever you're grooming, when you are as predatory as that, and you're using your platform to be a predator, I think that that's the time, YouTube. I think that's a good time to take down a channel. I wanna stand by all of the YouTubers out there that are making videos, bringing attention to this. I think the more attention on this, the better. I think everybody really needs to be united on this and stand together with one very strong message to YouTube, to him, and to the women out there who he's hurt that this is not okay. This is not acceptable and something needs to change. Something needs to be done. This video is not spilling tea. This video is not something where I'm gonna be like, pop your popcorn. This is some serious shit and I really do wanna see some real change because I am so fearful. I'm so fearful that this behavior will continue. And, and why would I think anything differently? This is, like I said, a pattern of abuse that he has clearly established and people like that don't change. They don't change, it will happen again, and something needs to happen 
to stop it. Again, like I said, I'm gonna link people's video in the description below if you want a more full picture with details on what exactly he and his spouse are doing to young women. Uh, I highly encourage that you check it out and like I said, stand in solidarity with everybody speaking out against this because I do think awareness is important and hopefully, hopefully, there is somebody out there that can make some real change happen. Oh, and by the way, everything in this video is alleged in case he tries to sue me. All right, bye.